Guys, so this is just um, a quick question today on a bit of number theory and looking at congruences and remainders. So question 1a, so pi is quite a nice one, we're just asked um, to do without performing any division and just using divisibility rules to determine whether 7,011 is divisible by 9, so it's just one mark. Now the way to do a question like this is you have to know the divisibility rules. Um, now 9 is quite a nice and easy one, that's why it's just one mark. For divisibility by 9, you've got to add up the digits um, in the number. So for this number here, 7,011, we're going to add up each individual digit together. So 7 plus 0, so that's 7 clearly. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. Now because this adds up to 9, it's divisible by 9 as well. So all you've got to do is add up the digits. So therefore, um, I'm just going to write it in notation. 9 does divide um, 7,011. And that's part A done. Nice and easy. Part B. So this is quite a tricky one, especially if you've never really seen anything like this before. Um, we're asked to find the remainder when 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 3 factorial plus all the way up to 50 factorial. So I'm going to stop at this point because I'm not going to keep going. Um, I'll be a whole day. But we've got to check what the remainder is when this is divided by 10. Now this is a tricky question. Um, the reason being is you're not going to be able to sum this up on your calculator. Um, and to sit here and do this by hand all day, you know, like I said, we'd be here all day. You'd need a lot of paper, and it'd be a really pointless endeavor. Um, because there's actually a, a nice, easy way of doing this. But we've got to think about what properties we use of congruences and remainders. So what this question's asking is, what's the remainder when one factorial plus two factorial plus three factorial all the way up to fifty factorial? You know, what is that mod ten? That's what that means when it's divided by ten. So what's the remainder? when it's mod 10. So what, we're actually, what we actually have here is a summation. We've got n factorial um, from when n is 1. So we start at 1 factorial all the way up to 50. So we're going up to 50 factorial, right? Now, like I've said before, this is 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus Three factorial. Now I'm going to stop at a certain point. You'll see why in a sec. Plus four factorial. Plus five factorial, and I'm going to stop there. That's a five. Plus five factorial. Now that does go all the way up to fifty. So I just illustrate that there. Um, this is all the way up to fifty factorial. Now why have I stopped here? So let's have a look at what this is saying. Well, what's one factorial? So hopefully you're okay with the notation in factorial, but all the you know the factorial notation represents is it's it's the multiplication with each previous term. So one factorial is just one times itself, so it's just one. Two factorial is two times one, so that's going to be plus two. Three factorial, so that's three times two, it's six times one, so we get plus six. Four factorial, so that's going to be four times three, so that's twelve times by two, so that's going to be twenty-four. Obviously, we times by one, we're give me the same again. 5 factorial, so it's going to be 5 times 4, times by 3, times by 2, times by 1. So you will get 120 for this now, right? But there's something special about here, why we stop here. So think about what I just said about 5 factorial. So it's 5 times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. Now this is the key bit, so I should have put it already, but this is mod 10. This is what we want to actually know, but this is mod 10. Now, why have I stopped here at 5 factorial and why have I not bothered writing the rest? Well, apart from the fact that it's going to take me a long time, the reason I'm stopping at 5 factorial is because we're looking for where we're going to get a, a 10 in the multiplication here. So because this is 5 factorial, I get 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. That's the key bit, the 5 and the 2. The 5 and the 2 give me a multiplication of 10. And because this is, if I do it up here, I'm going to get 5 times by 4 times by 3, times by 2, times by 1. This is the key bit, the 5 and the 2. This always gives me that 10 that we need. And obviously if I keep going here, 6 factorial, it's just going to be this times by 6. So I'm always going to have a 5 and a 2. And if you kept winning it, 7 factorial would just be 6 factorial times by 7. And that's all that keeps happening with factorials, right? Because we've got a 5 here and a 2 here, what this actually means is that if you take any term in this summation past here, Mod 10 is always going to be 0. So what this actually is now, mod 10, is just going to be 0, right? So that would be 120, but I'm going to stop here. Um, so I'm just going to 
ignore that, right? So just ignore that. So ignore that bit there. So we stop here. The actual summation, we can stop here. We've only got these four terms in the actual summation now because everything past here is just 0 mod 10. So we've only got to work out this now, mod 10. And we've got our remainder. Mod 10. So 1 plus 2, so that's 3. Um, plus 6 gives me 9. Plus 24, so that's going to give me 33. So that gives me 33. And if we work that out, mod 10, nice and easy. Mod 10, that's just going to give me 3. And there you go, guys. Nice and easy. Well, not nice and easy. Uh, there's a little bit of a trick to it. If you can spot this trick here, um, it's actually quite nice. It's one of them questions that looks a lot harder than it actually is. But this is the key bit. Spotting where you get this common, you know, this, this fact that always gives you 0 in the congruence. If you can spot that, these questions are nice and easy. And this is a very common sort of question, um, you know, Math Olympiad style questions. Um, and there's always usually the trick to them. So you've just got to spot that trick. Um, but three marks for that. So hopefully it's not too bad. And then finally, let's take a look at C. So part C, we've got to verify using the definition of congruence. E.g., if A is congruent to B mod N, then N divides the difference of A minus B. So we've got here, or we've got to verify that 34 is congruent to 9 mod 5. So using this definition here, all we're going to do is work that out, right? So my N, so N here, is going to be 5 for this question. It's mod 5. So therefore, 5. 5 must divide this difference of a minus b. If it doesn't, then it's not congruent to this, this equation that we've been given here. So, a minus b. So, my a is going to be 34 um, minus the b, which is going to be 9. So, 5 should divide 34 minus 9. So, 5. 34, divide, uh, 34 minus 9, sorry. Uh, that's going to give me 25. And... This is perfect. 5 does divide 25 because you can do 5 times 5. So therefore, um, you know, this verifies it. So therefore, verified. Verified. So I hope that's okay, guys. Um, so three parts to that question, um, six marks in total. Um, you know, be sure to leave any comments if you're unsure of any parts. Um, but I hope it's all nice and clear.